What do you get when a full frame camera with better video features than a Sony creates an amalgamation of fantastic imagery and a hybrid autofocus system that rivals the best of the best? Meet Lex, a young man who up until now has been on the search for the perfect camera his entire life will soon find himself in a twisted turn of events, a fate only possible on this channel. What's up YouTube family, Lex here today with another video for you guys and today is a special one. Now I know what you're gonna say. Lex, I thought you said that the Fujifilm X-H2S was the funnest camera you ever used or I thought the FX30 was here to stay. Yes, while all true, they're both great cameras. But if you go back, you'll see one particular camera that once held the throne in my arsenal. And that was the Lumix S5 Mark I. The Lumix S5 Mark I had such a great image and it was so good in low light and offered amazing video features and great in-body image stabilization while still being an amazing option for stills. At such an affordable price point, it was a no-brainer. The only thing that wasn't top tier was the autofocus. Now I know what everyone is gonna say with that corny quote, they did it, they finally did it, but it's true. Panasonic finally released a full frame camera with reliable autofocus. We're actually filming on the Lumix S5 Mark II right now. Now I'm not gonna talk about the build and ergonomics because flat out it feels great in the hand. It has a great grip and I like where all the dials and everything are placed. So there's no annoyances there when it comes to build and ergonomics. But when I'm looking for a camera, I'm mainly concerned with image quality and internal features for video. So I'll go over the features that I love, some bugs I hope they fix, transition into my thoughts on the image quality, and then refresh your ocular palette with some stills and video that I've taken with the Lumix S5 Mark II. The first feature that I am truly thankful for is the hybrid autofocus system. No longer are the days of having to manual focus all of my solo shots while trying to film myself. When getting this camera, the Lumix S5 Mark II, it does take a little bit of a learning curve when using the autofocus settings in continuous mode. But once you take a day aside to fully customize and understand which modes are best for your shooting style or situation, to me, I think it's up there with the best of the best. Now, I've seen some YouTubers say that the autofocus isn't up to par with Sony. I haven't seen any issues with it. I've filmed two music videos and I've went out and about through the city, Dumbo, Brooklyn, and I've got a bunch of B-roll and I've used autofocus probably 95% of the time and I have no issues with it. If it isn't up to par with Sony, which I haven't noticed, it probably will be in the next coming months with a firmware update or two. So look out for that. The in-body image stabilization is so good that I literally forget that I own a gimbal. Like real talk, I've taken this camera out on two music videos. I went out to Dumbo, Brooklyn and left the gimbal home. And not once did I ever think, I wish I brought my gimbal for this. To take it even further, I don't even shudder at leaving my tripod home because it offers such incredible control when using it with the active IS or boost mode or electron, uh, electronic image stabilization, which is a boost mode for the IBIS. Going further, when using the in-body image stabilization with the Lumix S5 Mark II, uh, when getting the footage back, I rarely ever look and go, oh man, this is a little bit jarring or this doesn't look so good, this doesn't look stabilized. It usually is never even a thought in my mind. I'm like, you know what? This looks great and I have no annoyances with that whatsoever. The ability to use custom LUTs in the camera while shooting, this is so inspiring and helpful because I know how my LUTs work and to be able to use them while filming makes me feel extra confident when exposing for the image because I can clearly see how it's gonna look in post. Going hand in hand with the in-camera LUT function, the ability to be able to use waveforms just further help me to expose properly when filming, that's a godsend. And you know, to me, it just gives me the freedom to know for a fact that I am exposing correctly and I'm not clipping in either region. Another option this camera offers is the ability to overlay a variety of aspect ratios used in modern filmmaking today, along with an anamorphic de-squeeze option in camera. Most cameras don't do that. Not even the Sony Cinema line FX3 and FX30 offer those uh, abilities to de-squeeze in camera. The third feature that I love having on this camera is the ability to be able to film in 6K open gate. 
It gives me the option to crop and post, whether it's doing vertical video for social media, or if I want to just change the aspect ratio on post, I can do so. Also with the ability to film in 4K DCI with true cinema 4K, that's amazing because not even the cinema line of the Sony's, the FX3 and the FX30, offer that capability. The ability to film with the 180 degree shutter angle and be able to, you know, have that confidence knowing that I could switch frame rates from 24 frames per second to 48 frames per second or 60 and the camera will automatically apply the accurate shutter angle for a natural motion blur. I mean, once again, this is something that is not offered just hybrid cameras, period. So, you know, I love it. Panasonic is so intuitive that when you get the camera, all you have to do is hold down any button on the camera and it will allow you to customize and configure the functions to your liking. There are so many features that I can't cover that outranks the Sony or Canon cameras at this cost that I can't even get deep into today because it will take too long. Now, some things that I think should and will be fixed with a firmware update, because Panasonic does have a history of amazing firmware updates, is when turning the camera on, there's a slight delay and it is noticeable, especially when coming from a fast camera like the Fujifilm X-H2S. Uh, I think it will be fixed, but if not, it's not a deal breaker, but it is annoying. Second issue with this camera is the battery life. It's not bad, but I do get longer battery life with the Fujifilm X-H2S, FX30, and the Sony a7 IV. Once again, it's not a deal breaker, but slightly noticeable. Lastly, when taking stills, you have your exposure dialed in correctly, right? And you get ready to press the shutter. And for some reason, when you have pressed the shutter, it's like the camera, you know, the exposure jumps up and brightens up right before taking the photo. But when you look at the photo and camera, it's at the perfect exposure that you set it to. Uh, you know, it's not a deal breaker, but it is a little bit annoying because when I first got it, I thought that like I was overexposing my images when pressing the shutter. And when I would, you know, open it back up in camera and I'm like, oh, you know, it was done correctly. So this is something that I feel like Panasonic, out of all the things that I mentioned uh, that they need to fix, this is like number one, like that is annoying to me. But once again, it's not a deal breaker. Now, I've said this about the previous model, but there's a sharp, silky texture to the image. I don't know, there's just something about the image that has like a silky texture to it. Like I said before, I can push and pull the images. So this camera has a lot of latitude and you know, when shooting with backlit situations, I don't have any issues when it comes to exposure and the highlights just have a nice roll off. The Lumix S5 Mark II does amazing in low light. I mean, when it comes to the full frame lineup of Lumix cameras, most of them are great in low light, especially because they have the dual gain ISO function where 640 is the low gain and then going up to ISO 4000 is the high gain, the dual function. And having such a high ISO dual gain at the 4000 is just amazing. I wish that most cameras would you know just keep this as like a standard. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, the Lumix S5 Mark II seems to have like this silky sharp texture to the image and I love it. I mean, this is subjective, but it just makes me wanna go out and film and take photos of everything. I mean, I'm really the type of person that forgets to bring their camera, but with this camera, I'm like, I gotta bring it. Just cause I can't wait to, you know, get the footage and stills back home and play it back after a light color grade or a light edit in Lightroom. So lovely and a job well done to the team over at Panasonic. Now here's some more spontaneous B-roll that I've taken in both the day and the night over the past couple weeks and hope you guys enjoy it. This was barely a review. Uh, this was just me talking about my favorite functions and features of the Lumix S5 Mark II. And to me, this camera is the best bang for your buck and a serious piece of kit for any filmmaker or photographer. 
It has sharp, silky clean rendering, advanced reliable autofocus, and amazing filmmaking tools and features for hybrid shooters today and tomorrow. I hope this video was helpful for those of you who are curious about the S5 II, and I for one will be keeping this camera and will be taking the spotlight as my main camera on the channel till the S1H Mark II arrives. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell as I have two lens recommendations for this camera and other great content coming that I don't want you to miss. Till then, take care.